by now. But I do believe that we should all go home and create a poem called Self-Disclosure. Because we all have those dark areas of our lives that daily go unchecked, that deserve maximum exposure. So I'll go first. Step out on faith with the hopes that my transparency somehow frees me. Or at least those of you here today will find liberty as I uncover the complexities of my emotional and magnanimity. Now, even though I eat my vegetables, take my vitamins, and say my prayers, I swear, I'm finding hard to keep up with the pace when life continually punches me in my face and makes me feel like I'm running out of time. I mean, I have two daughters, one son, and a grandson. And although my kids are grown and my grandson is the cutest puppy you will ever see in your life, in unity, they all depend on me to be a pillar of stability. But some days, my foundation gets weak. I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm really not, because I really don't have more than others would dream. But it seems what's left on the docket and what's left on the dial just doesn't add up. And anxiety shows up daily and whispers, you're not going to make it because you are running out of time. Speaking of which, it seems only one way my mental handles my anxiety nowadays, and that's to lay in my wife's arms in a haze and cry like a baby until I fall asleep. But when I'm with her, the earth stands still. She holds me tight and says, baby, don't worry about it. The money going to come, and you're going to pay that bill. And I'll be like, dang! And I wonder if my hunger is enough to keep us from going under, or is the rest of my life going to be a snapshot of the 90s? And all of this will just be another opportunity that I blunder. Big said it best, word to mother, I'm dangerous. Crazier than a bag of fucking angel dust. Now here's the issue. I'm twisted, I'm gifted, and I'm talented. And because of that reason, most of my contemporaries can't handle it. Because the way I view the world and how my mind processes makes me feel like the Manchurian candidate, post-traumatic. Now, I know it's not a hot topic to render a piece that's primarily biopic because most people would much rather I be culturally conscious or more philosophic in my creative process. <laughs> So you want to say, I'm running out of time. To you I say, I'm running out of time. See, I don't know about you, but I know I'm living on borrowed time, and at some point I have to return it. I just want the legacy associated with me that when I step out of time into eternity, all of the applause, I want to feel like I, I want to feel like I, I earned it. So, I need somebody here. Now, I don't know if you know, but I've been to the mountain. And I've seen the mountaintop. But I struggle to get there because the bag of self-doubt and insecurity are much too heavy to climb that high with. So I need somebody here to tell me it's okay with not being okay. Okay. I need for one of y'all to teach me what exactly is it that you pray when you say when you want to crawl in a ball and just pray the day will go away.
So I ask you here today. Do you ever feel like you're running out of time? You know, I'm 54 years old, and I gotta, I gotta be honest. Like, I, I got problems. You know what I'm saying? And I, I got problems. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot of stuff that needs to be, to be dealt with. You know what I'm saying? You know, back from when my brother died, and my sister died, and then my other sister died, my first child died, and you know what I'm saying? I just got shit, man. You know what I'm saying? You know. And um, but yeah, I uh. I would really, I would really love to blame my former use of alcohol and crack cocaine that seems to cause the wreck of a train in the deep recesses of my brain. But the fact of the matter is, I'm unstable. I don't know how it factors in, but I did lose two sisters, one brother, and only me and God know how many others that got caught in the crossfire of life that never had a chance to run for cover. See, I want to say I'm over it and I'm doing fine. This type of stuff happens in the hood all the time, but why did he have to take mine? See, that kind of heartbreak is on some next level stuff. Why then? So I detach myself emotionally to keep people from getting close to me because if I do, I will be exposed for not being as level-headed as they supposed to be. Now, to many, I know it's trendy to recite about the pale face that is worn by the enemy, but my energy must be redirected to make sure the incredible hope Remains Bill Dixie. See, I'm unstable and truly believe it started shortly after the crater when my mother said I would never be able to be good enough for anybody no matter what I bring to the table. See, my mind sometimes be playing tricks on me. So against my will, on many days, I'm forced to take these fucking pills called brew propion that's supposed to make me chill but all they do is suppress the pain disappointment and sense of loss I feel and don't do shit I said on many days I'm against my will I'm supposed to take these pills that supposed to make me chill but all they do is suppress the pain disappointment and sense of loss I feel and don't do Shit. I intentionally walk around with an earbud in my ear so people won't be clear. Whether I'm actually talking to somebody or is there somebody actually on the other end of here. See, I've become so numb to the pain because God ain't acted quick enough to wipe away the pain. And I've become quick to cop the finger of blame and telling God to his face, yo man, all of this is your fault. I'm unstable because my people are dying and I'm tired of crying because the institutions that are buying body bags wholesale continually are hiring. And all we're asking them to do is consider that we have a family to look after and just stop firing. See, I'm, I'm unstable, but, but, 
I said I'm unstable, but I'm going to take my seat right now. <laughs> this type of poem always causes me to break down. And I do enough of that at home by myself, and I don't need for y'all to be around. But before I go, I will say this, that when we grace the stage and some of you are sitting out there with your nose tooted up because we ain't your fucking fame, please be kind. Because this is the only form of healing some of us will ever find. And although it may seem that our talent is a part of some creative and poetic scheme, what you will never see is our eyes pinned to the skies, asking the divine to deliver us from this diabolical dream and help us to realign. Because it really is a gift and a curse when we share with you our poetic mind, which is what makes me unstable. <laughs> But she's a mixture mm. of a melanin magical elixir. And through the end of the time in our hearts and minds, her strength, courage, and perseverance should remain a permanent fixture. She embodies the beauty of a violin. As the sundress she purchased from the rainbow shop makes melodies vibrating along the form-fitting, hell, well, well can form-fitting Ashley Stewart undergarments <laughs> that she wears. And given the opportunity, I would pluck every one of her strings with a wet finger. Our libido is set ablaze when we gaze at a smile that continues to amaze when she walks into a room and lights it all the way up like she's the star on stage. She unconsciously captivates as her upper lip curls when she slurs certain words. And as men, we salivate as our brains saturate with thoughts that intoxicate of rolling her up with our tongue and smoking her like the high-grade, hybrid indigo that makes all things all better, baby. However, you will notice on occasion when attempting to make her point, her head will wobble like a dashboard bobble balancing on a stick. And when I'm trying to handle my business and I need her to sit, all that mouth and all she does just won't quit. Especially when she think I'm acting shady. She ain't got no problem with getting lit, going classy, bougie, and ratchet and start popping off that slick. She's a black woman. Now, to fertilize that seed, her mama and daddy had to crossbreed. So she's mixed with a touch of style, a pinch of pizzazz, and a whole lot of don't make me bust your ass if you and I got the clash. She's a black woman. Now to the naked eye, I know she's talented, although it may seem. But you try blowing at her too many times when that light goes from red to green. She'll put that car in park and turn that intersection into a crime scene. She's a black woman. So to many men, that makes her complicated. That's because way before COVID hit, she became immune to the foolishness brother started feeding her. So before the pandemic hit, she had already been vaccinated. <laughs> She's a black woman. She is the definition of get your weight up. Gives you meaning to dinner's ready, baby, time to eat it. Come fill your plate up. And just the smell of it makes me want to lay up. Give her the codes, the keys to everything I own and never change her. Do whatever I can as a man to make her the queen of her own land. Because we were kind of and by your side forever will I stand. Because you are my beautiful women. Signed sincerely yours, committed black man.